Welcome back to another video. <laughs> Today's topic is how to swim 500 meters freestyle swimming, okay? So why 500 meters? Why 20 laps? If you can swim 20 laps non-stop continuously in a standard 25 meter pool, that's pretty much like the gold standard when it comes to swimming. That tells me that you are a competent swimmer, that tells me that you can handle your own. That tells me that you are not a beginner anymore. And if you don't believe me, in order to become a lifeguard, you need to pass an endurance or fitness test. And that fitness test involves a lot of rescue situations and scenarios that we had to do at first aid. But it also includes doing 500 meters continuous lap swimming. And you gotta do this under a time limit amongst your peers, your other lifeguard students, that's more pressure, so. <laughs> you need to be fit physically, okay? You need to be able to swim competently nonstop. And I remember when I first started out, I sucked. I really sucked because before I became a swimmer, like seriously, become, before my lifeguarding swim instructor journey began, I was a bodybuilder. I was the complete opposite of a swimmer. When, in terms of phys physical, physicality, stamina and all that, I had no stamina. And that's why I don't recommend most people that, to become bodybuilders because bodybuilders is like, they got so much muscle and all that muscle just, just burns a lot of fuel, requires a lot of energy and like protein to keep up the size. So you gotta eat a lot, you just keep shoveling food. But also, when it comes to being in water, muscle sinks. Try swimming with a bag of rocks tied to your back. That's what it feels like when you're a bodybuilder because the muscles are a detriment in water. Fat, on the other hand, is a bonus because fat floats. Like, if you don't believe me, try boiling some soup. The fat rises to the surface, all right? So if you're fat, that's a benefit for you because it will keep you buoyant. So when it comes to men and women, who's more buoyant in the water based on what I'm just explaining to you right now? Women! Women are the better natural swimmers when you compare them to men. Men, we have too much muscle, especially upper body muscle. It just, it makes us imbalanced. That's the fun fact. So we are not really balanced, us men in the water, compared to women. Because women, where does most of the fat accumulate? Around the hips. And where are the hips located? Right in the middle of the body. So women have the best buoyancy advantage when it comes to swimming, unfortunately for us guys. So if you're a female, then get in the pool. You have an excuse now. And if you're a guy, just be aware of this, all right? Your buoyancy is not gonna be as good as women. You're gonna sink like a rock if you have lots of muscles. Your journey is gonna be a lot harder. But hey, I went through the, this journey as a bodybuilder. I sucked. In my class, I remember I was the only bodybuilder in my class. All my peers were like fat or skinny people. So there you go, and I still passed, right? And how did I do it? Well, I'm gonna explain in this video. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to swim 500 meters. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a raw, uncut footage of me performing this for you. Because I don't wanna show you to you right now. It'd be too boring, right? It's just very repetitive when you look at the footage itself. It's a good reference point. It shows that I know what I'm talking about. You know, I walk the walk compared to all these fat lifeguard coaches that I see sitting in a lawn chair just like shouting and barking orders at their students. You can watch my footage of me performing 500 meters freestyle at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. First of all, don't try to do 20 laps at your first session, okay? It's just not gonna happen. You have to start small, like I did. What did I do? I started with just one lap, just trying to accomplish one lap, and then move on to two laps, and then the three. So you you gradually build up your stamina over time. If the first lesson is trying to do 20 laps, you're just gonna burn out, okay? You're gonna give up, it's too difficult for you, okay? So don't try to set the goal to 20 meters on the first day. That should be near like week five, week six, week seven, week eight, like later on, okay? And it's going to take several weeks, to be honest, if you're going to spend three to five sessions in the pool per week, and about like an hour per session basis. Yeah, give yourself a minimum one to two months. Is lap swimming like running a marathon? Yes, it's very similar, okay? We get very similar concepts. Like for example, marathon runners, 
they don't sprint. You notice that marathon runners, they, they put like, their output is like 50 to 60, 70%. They're not giving it their all when they're running like a, like a long marathon. No, they're just, it's about 50, 60%, 70% maximum. Same thing goes with lap swimming, continuous lap swimming. If you're a sprint swimmer, it's the same concept as sprinting on dry land, okay? You can only do it in short spurts. So don't try to outgun yourself when it comes to 20 laps. It's a marathon, it's not a race. And think of it this way. So when you see swimmers, they're, they're doing continuous lap swimming. They look really lazy and zombie-like in the water and very sluggish. They're doing that for a reason. Because when you tense up in the water, it just works against you. And then you gas out, okay? So you shouldn't be tense when you're doing your freestyle. You've got to hold back no matter what, okay? It's hard in the beginning. You want to give it your all. You want to keep pushing yourself, but no. Don't focus on intensity. Focus on consistency. Build your Roman Empire brick by brick. Start with one lap. Try to go for two laps, three laps. You don't want it too hard and you don't want it too easy for your body. And how do you know? Your body will know. Your body will know. Your body will tell you, can I do 10 pull-ups or can I do 11? That, that extra pull-up. Your body will tell you. Third tip, break down your swimming technique. Most of us, we don't have a perfect front call going in, right? And when I'm talking about perfect front call, I'm talking about like an optimal form. There are weak points in all of our techniques. Most of us have a really bad front kicking technique. And we just don't know it because nobody's filmed us or we haven't filmed ourselves doing the front crawl. People unfortunately don't know. So film yourself first, find out, or just, just ask someone to take a look at your front crawl, your freestyle, your breaststroke. Just take a look at your form and see what points you need to work on. And most of the time, it's, it's usually your side breathing or your front kicking that needs to work. So you gotta break down the technique, is what I'm saying. And what's the best way to break down a technique for front kicking? Holding out a kickboard and just kicking and doing one or two laps of that. Break down your technique because you never know what are some things you need to work or refine on. A lot of swimmers, they just go guns blazing. Like they just, just try to wing the freestyle front crawl. And they don't know that for a fact, their, we their weaknesses are their kicking or their side ring that's holding them back right? until it's too late. Fourth tip I'm gonna give you is know that you will never have a perfect swim. You will never have a perfect swim. You will never have a perfect 500 meter swim session, okay? I guarantee you. There are gonna be a lot of things that are gonna mess you up, right? You have a cold, you don't feel good on that day, you mess up on a flip turn, you drink water by accident through your mouth or your nose, you're competing with another swimmer that just entered your lane. There's all of these external factors that will just mess up your session. The most recent swim, the footage that I'm gonna show you, guess what, my goggles fogged up, so I couldn't see where I was going. But I had to complete the 20 laps for you guys, so I was practically just swimming blindly most of the time because I couldn't see anything. So you can't pray for perfection, you can only just bet on consistency. All right, just put in the work, show up at the pool three to five times a week. That's showing up is like half the battle. Most people just don't show up. Most people just don't put in the work and just getting in the water instead of just complaining online, right? So show up, be consistent, set this goal for one to two months. Fifth tip that I can give you, don't put your eggs all in one basket. And when I'm saying basket, I'm saying swimming, <laughs> just focusing on swimming alone. A lot of my students, complain that they can't make any progress. And I ask them, are you working on your diet? Are you trying other sports that complement swimming like running or lifting weights at the gym? And most of the times they say, no, they don't. They just swim, that's all they do. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Don't just rely on swimming. If you wanna be a well-rounded swimmer, if you wanna develop your stamina, you can't just like show up and just swim every day. No, a lot of swimmers, a lot of competitive swimmers, what you don't know is that when they're not in the pool, they're either running or they're weight training. And I'm not saying like bodybuilding. You don't have to be like really bulky. I'm just saying just weight training, you know, like go for at least like 15 reps for whatever you do, lifting a dumbbell this way, this way, this way, just light weight training. 
will complement your swimming because you're doing a lot of pulling, a lot of kicking. You can refine those muscles, strengthen those muscles by just doing just a little bit of light training. Start running, start biking, start cycling, start rowing, just whatever you can. Just whatever cardio exercise you can do, okay? You can't just get your cardio from swimming. Okay, that's just one form. It's a very light form. There's no resistance. You need some sort of resistance, okay? Running is what I do, is what I recommend, is what all serious swimmers do. If you really want to outperform and just increase your stamina in no time, start running. I know it's hard. It hurts your, your, your joints and your muscles and it aches and all that. But believe me, it's all worth it at the end, okay? So, to become a better endurance swimmer, you need to run. Those are my five tips that I can give you for endurance lap swimming or getting that 500 meter 20 lap goal of yours. Uh, if you really want to learn how to swim, sign up for my online course, 7dayswim.co. It's the online course that teaches you how to swim from A to Z. Thousands of students have enrolled and learned how to swim thanks to yours truly. And you can also join our private Facebook group. The link is down below where we can help you out with your swimming questions and tips. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like this video. My name is Justin. Hit that notification bell. Bing! And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye bye
Thanks for watching, bye-bye. 